Press uh, itself means uh, precast seismic structural system. The technology itself of press was developed in the late 90s in the United States. And that was a huge effort from the precast concrete industry to try to revamp the quality and the potential of precast concrete in seismic regions. Over here we've got the main seismic walls of the press building. So it's a real breakthrough in, uh, in earthquake engineering uh, in a way of being able to design a structure to be subjected to a big earthquake, much bigger than what people would be ever imagine, like the Christchurch one, for example, without uh, damage into the structure. February 22nd and the 4th of September earthquakes really hammered the CBD. There was one building out of many others that didn't get uh, damage at all and was basically the day after operational. That building belongs to Southern Cross Hospital. The Southern Cross Endoscopy building was the first standalone building that had theatres in them. As a result of that, they have to be designed for much higher earthquakes, uh, typically one in a thousand year return period earthquake. We wanted to deliver a a better building for Southern Cross for a similar price to a conventional building and the geometrical layout of the building led us towards using press technology for that building. The press building has precast walls. Inside the walls are a series of uh, strands, steel strands. They are anchored at the foundation and uh, anchored off at the top of the wall and what that allows is as the building is uh, shaken in a large earthquake, uh, the walls rock one way and the strand stretches and you can stretch the strand a long distance um, without it breaking. And then there is a cable that is passed through each of these beams at each level. They clamp the building down onto the foundation and that's anchored off at one end and then tensioned up at the other end and that provides the clamping force and they pull the building back to its original position at the end of the earthquake. Concrete has been the, the, the prime material that's been used. Uh, there were a number of reasons for that. Uh, the site on which the building was constructed was, a, was quite a small site, so access was, was quite restrictive. Uh, we had a reasonably tight program, so we wanted a lot of the work to be precast off-site and then brought onto site in components. Uh, we also wanted the components of concrete to be relatively small so they could be craned into position with relative ease. So precast concrete was the ideal option for this particular building. This building for Victoria University, it's got a lot of very expensive, especially postgrad research equipment in it. Press technology was perfect technology for this building in terms of protecting the equipment and the contents after an earthquake. We really wanted to push the press concept further with this building. One of the first in the world at the time was to use external energy dissipators. That gave two advantages. One is that they can replace the external energy dissipators after the earthquake without disrupting the ongoing use of the building. For a building owner with a long-term view, that's got a lot of advantage. But also, on site here, there are students around all the time. We were building within a constrained site. We were wanting to lift these components up and put them in a live campus. We didn't want to be pouring a lot of concrete, put, doing a lot of noisy work on site, so we're able to make the building off site and clip it together with a dry technology. And that's where the press technology enabled us to build it very quickly and very quietly. So, this is the joint between the building up here and the ground. So, this steel box is on the ground, and this main column along this joint here, it can rock on the steel box when we have an earthquake. There's a large cable that runs right through the middle of this column and is buried down in the basement. What that means is as the column pulls over, it, straight, it will then try and straighten the building up so that it always comes back to upright, which is important for people coming in and using the building straight after the earthquake. So these are the removable dissipators. If there's a large earthquake and they want to be replaced because of the amount of work they've done, you can unbolt these, take them off, put a new one on, the building's as good as new. We did about four iterations of this joint to get it looking nice and getting it real simple to build. We went through quite a rigorous procurement process in testing different options in terms of finding the easiest way to assemble it and what the cost benefits were for the um, external energy dissipation for the client. So really I think the buildings turned out very well for everyone. Mainly we were, were surprised at how quickly and easily it went together. I've been here around for probably nine years and it has not been easy to introduce uh, new technology, new to New Zealand, but not new to the rest of the world, and keep on pushing the research and development of that to convince people that it was actually appropriate. First of all, people were arguing uh, there's no code provisions. It has been done. Now, we have been writing the code provisions, so designers can design 
this type of technology, so they are code compliant. The second obstacle that was, okay, you can design it, but uh, what about constructing them? The contractor are not, are not familiar with that without knowing that uh, it's a technology so simple to build up because it's like Lego. You're ba ba basically bringing elements, prefabricated elements on site. You're putting them together fast, fastly and quickly. We're taking the modern evolution and component-based design where you're taking big bits of the building and clipping them together and making sure we can do that in concrete. All of the components are the same. That repeatability means that we can afford to cut all the forms from, from steel with um, CAD technology, which means that everything fits, everything's within 0.2 mils accuracy. These holes where the pin, pins fit are within a mil of where they need to be, which means we've got the confidence to fit it up square and correctly. The one thing that we were really keen to demonstrate was to present to the industry a building that could be put together using modern technology, which was the press system, and be used and be built using materials that were readily available and able to be managed by a number of contractors. You can see the, the main precast column, it's got a corbel. All the beam components were very standard precast concrete beams with ends that were armoured. The beams, similar to the walls, have armoured plates at the end so you're not getting crushing of the concrete. Right. Um, there were ducts that were cast into the beams to allow the post tensioning cable to be passed through. Between each of the couple of walls, we've actually got these UFP plates. We included some UFP plates, which are U-shaped flexural plates. Uh, we understand that's the first time that's been used in, 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 in New Zealand. And the purpose of the UFP plates is to actually act as, as a dissipation between the walls. And they were used to tie the walls together. That helped with the damping of the building structure and also helped tie the ends of the walls down. So it will be damaged to the plates, which we can then, from here, just unbolt, take out and replace again. We were working with a contractor who had not built a building like this before and we wanted to make sure that it was easy for them to put the building together using materials and technology that was readily available in the construction industry. And so we were in a position of having to provide a better building at no extra cost. We worked very closely with the main contractor to uh, demonstrate that and, and it was successfully demonstrated. Victoria took a bit of a leaf of faith. There's always difficulty in uptake in emerging technologies. For the future, we need to be rebuilding in, in better ways. So I think the engineers are going to drive it because their natural professional ambition to do better for their clients. I also think the clients are going to get smarter. You know, for clients like Victoria University of Wellington, they care about business continuity. It's more of just a modern evolution of the way seismic design has been developing over the last 50 years anyway. We've seen a huge amount of interest in this building and the technology that's been used to design it, particularly since the February 22nd earthquake where many other buildings have sustained a large amount of damage. The endoscopy consultant's building, the damage was minimal. Certainly all the equipment in the theatres uh, was intact and they were able to continue operating there uh, very soon after the earthquake occurred. Timber houses, uh, because they're quite light, uh, went through quite nicely under the earthquake. So people got the impression that timber is the best. It's not true. It would be nice if all the industries, concrete, steel, timber, together, so what we should be pushing instead of fighting about what is the best material is to talk about what is the best way of designing things. If you start thinking that foundation in any case will be done in concrete no matter what, because it does make sense, then using the best technology in concrete, what, what I would like to see is the concrete industry pushing for the best concrete. People have prejudice about, about concrete being not durable. Wow, concrete can do a, a fantastic stuff. Not only the construction type can change, but the materials itself is so, so much powerful nowadays. High strength concrete, self-compacting concrete. New Zealand could actually do much more for even residential house construction with concrete, and concrete can itself be providing very interesting solutions and very warm and, uh, and insulated and, and, and vibration controlled solutions that people don't just, just imagine. So it would be quite nice to just have an exchange of information. Concrete's got some really good aspects associated with it. It's very strong in compression. It's a very durable material. It doesn't rot, it doesn't break down, it doesn't rust. It's got good fire resistance characteristics as well. There's a whole number of reasons why concrete is a very good uh, building material. Very often we think about uh, the lifetime of a building being 50 years. 
A lifetime of a structure is hopefully much more than that. If you start taking that into consideration, the new opportunity of new technologies also to build, be, build buildings which are durable, very, very durable, very long-term durability means 100, 150, 200 years. If you want to then change your building uh, site, the location, the type of structure, completely the configuration of the skeleton, nowadays you can do it, because by using one of these Lego elements, you can basically demount the system, recycle it, which means either reuse it as it is, or change the basically the location of that. This is what new technology can do nowadays, which was absolutely unconceivable until a few years ago. I think we're still in the sort of the cultural shock after Christchurch. I think it's important as a built environment industry that we reinforce people's confidence in our industry. There are people in Christchurch saying I'd never go into multi-storey building again, yet the building for Southern Cross it was used the next day. There's no reason these buildings can't be designed in a modern, sophisticated way to be able to be used straight after the earthquake. And using those technologies and people understanding the theory and the science behind that, that will restore their confidence in large construction and our built environment. Professionally, it's really important that we do try to exhibit best practice all the time, and I believe this is becoming best practice. As we head towards the future in terms of rebuilding Christchurch, we would like to think that there would be a strong push towards more press technology buildings because of their performance in a large earthquake. So there is a great momentum at this stage. We cannot afford not to implement tomorrow what we know the best in 2011.